Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And uh, before I get started, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. If not, thumbs down works as well. And if you like knife content and you're not already, hit the subscribe button. Today I have for you the Civivi knives at Riffle. The Riffle comes in at $55.25. And uh, we got about a nice medium medium to large size knife. You have an overall length of eight inches. You have a blade length of 3.5 inches. You have a grip area from right here by the flipper tab to the back of around three and three quarters of an inch. Uh, you have a, a handle thickness from here to here of 0.47 inches. So under, it's a thinner than average. Average is about half inch. You have a width closed in the pocket from here to here of 1.3 inches and you have a blade stock thickness of 0.12 inches um this thing's ground nice and thin or i'd say pretty thin it's uh ranging from 14 to 15 thousandths along the entire edge and it has a 20 degrees per side edge bevel from factory on there so you know it looks it, it'll, it would be a lot thinner because you have that that little bitty bevel on there. If they put, you know, a 15 degree bevel on there, then it would thicken up pretty quickly. <clears throat> That's why it's good to note what is sharpened at after you talk about uh, the thickness behind the edge. Uh, before we get into this one, I'm going to break off like I've been doing into some usage footage. And before I do so, y'all got to understand... I don't, the stuff I'm testing this, the knife for is just stuff that any average person could happen to do. I'm not saying I do any of this in my normal day-to-day -day life. I know some people get bent out of shape. I'm not trying to break any knives. Uh, I'm being safe and cautious with gloves and using a rubber mallet so I don't have my hand in the way. So you gotta just understand, you know, I'm and by no means am I trying to bash a knife because it didn't do something well. You know, it's just what happened in the test, and I could have a faulty knife. I could have a great knife. So just just know that I'm not siding either way. I have no, you know, I'm not a fanboy to any company. I have no, nothing to, to gain from, you know, this review. Just enjoy the, the usage footage and the wrap-up toward the end. I'll see y'all in a bit. Check the sharpness. We're going to start out with some single-wall cardboard. have a little catch right here. We're going to cut this uh, bungee cord. It's some thick uh, bungee cord. This is for insulation tie down on a, in a plant. If it's not sharp, it won't cut it. Oh, Still sharp. We're gonna try to cut up these two big, thick. This is a thick, uh, pretty dense tubing with uh, nylon webbing, and this one is a uh, double walled, very dense as well. We'll start off with the small one, but let's check the edge real quick. In that front area. It's 
still good. Nice. Pearson. Much easier that way. We're going to get through some zip ties. Definitely not the tool that I would be using to get through zip ties, but hey, this we're going to act like this is all we have. These are 25 pounders right here. This is a 50 pounder, and this is a 120 pound zip tie. Let's try to push these, open these by pushing them, push cutting. All right. Not bad. Let's see. Not bad. And probably this these are this one's difficult. Let's see. Let's try to do it like this. I doubt it. Yep. Dang. That was a lot of pressure on that edge. Let's see. Got a little, I don't know if it's a roll or something right there. Yeah, I got some minor edge damage on the whole blade. Let's see. Still cuts nicely. Still cuts good. Yeah, I can feel something right here, a little bit. Little catch and little catch right up in this area, yeah, right here. We do a little bit of uh, slicing, shaving uh, on this red oak. Uh, not super hard stuff, but it definitely lets me know how the ergos are. Let me move this out of the way so I don't slide. Because if the ergos aren't good, I'm putting a lot of pressure sometimes and you can feel it. Start out light. See how the edge is doing. See slides right here from this back side, but it's that said it's pretty good. Um, right here, I'm feeling it right in this area. Right here. This little edge. It's not sharp, but whenever you're putting pressure down, you definitely feel it. I doubt that did anything to the edge. Still fairly sharp. We've got a little bit of this 3 8 inch sisal rope. Twisted sisal rope. Like Pete. Probably should have did this in the beginning. All right, that edge doesn't feel too good anymore. Yeah, we got a dull spot. Let's see. Still cutting. <laughs> Not bad. I'd say it's uh, still sharp.
I mean, definitely not as sharp as it was in the beginning. It's got, it's got some dulling up in this area right here. Probably where I was putting the most force into. We're going to do a few um, overstrikes, spine wax on uh, this plywood. Uh, attempt to cut through this these three couple wires. Um, I will say I have stropped this knife up and that's one thing I will say about this 14C28N that I love. Comes back very, very easily. We'll see. Oop. Trying to do this behind the camera at an angle. Nice and sharp. Let's see if it'll hold that and let's see if it takes any damage. It shouldn't, but you never know. That's why we do these tests. Let's see. You might want to cover your ears. One chop and look at that. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Let's see that up close and personal. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. That was the easiest any of them ever went through it. And I don't see any noticeable damage. Let's feel. I do this to see if, if somebody doesn't know why I'm doing this. You can run your fingernail along and you'll feel any bumps. You know, if you have like a snag or something, then you know you have some edge deformation. Maybe a little bit. Let's see. Let's zoom back out. Check the sharpness. Still sharp. Let's see. Let's see if it goes through this uh, thicker cable. Just a little bit thicker than the last one. It breezed through that last one. I'm hoping it does the same for this because that was nice. I like me some 14T28N great uh, budget stainless. Let's see how it fares. This one's a little bit harder to get through, so we'll see. Yep, look at that. It judo chopped it. See if you got any edge damage. I doubt it. And let's feel. And let me not do that without looking. Got a little minor, but probably won't feel anything in the paper. Let's check that out. Let's bring this back out. Absolutely nothing. Awesome. Uh, shave, we're gonna shave some of this copper wire. That was the Best Tech Falco that did this little bit. Um, let's see, where was the Civivi? This was the Civivi, um, the Tanto, the Brazen, did pretty well. Let's see how the riffle does. I don't know why I couldn't remember that earlier. Let's find a spot that we haven't used. We'll go right here. Yep, I just took a chunk. I heard it. Yep, it's taking chunks. And this has put a lot of stress on that edge. Copper soft, so it shouldn't do any major damage. Let's see. 
I don't see any major damage and I don't feel any. And let's see what we did. That's what we did right there. We took some nice uh, chunks out of it. Let's see, let me see if I can do it without the light shining on it. Can't wait to set up my studio in my shop. Let's check that edge out. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty awesome for a nice budget knife in 14C28N. Love it. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed that usage footage. I know I sure did. Um, and let's let's take a closer look at this knife. See the the edge didn't take much. I mean the coating didn't take much damage. Not really coating. They it's just a blasted finish that's been lightly stonewashed. Uh, turned over on this side. No major scratches from the copper or no no uh, copper deposits. You can see a little bit of the uh, blasting lightening up down here. Not a, not an issue. This edge did not take any major damage whatsoever, and it's still sharp. All I've done with this is stropped it after, I mean, I stropped it right before I started doing the cable cutting because if the, the knife isn't sharp, it tends to be really hard to get through that. And as y'all can see, this thing went through it with a breeze. It's one awesome thing about 14C28N, besides being stainless, it, uh, it strops up very, very nicely, it takes a super keen edge, I think 14C was uh, used in razor blades, you know, to get that very, very uh, fine apex. And uh, I think Kershaw may have, I don't know if they just exclusively used it in the beginning or they had a uh, hand in, you know, the formulation. I don't know. But good steel nonetheless. Uh, you have this nice drop point. I think it's a very attractive blade. You got a high flat grind on there. The, the finish on it's very, very smooth to the touch. Um, you have no sharp edges on the top. You got a nice little bevel up top. You do have a row of jimping. I call it mild jimping, mild to medium. Gives you some traction, but it's not overly aggressive, which that's perfect for me. You have a perfectly executed sharpening choil that clears the plunge line, as you can see. You have multiple opening methods. You can use that opening hole from either side. You can thumb flick it, or you can use the flipper tab. And the detent is dialed in perfection. It's one thing that we knives, and our Civivi in this case, uh, does excellent is their detents. They have definitely got that down to a science. They're usually perfection. You will get some that are, you know, bad, but that's just, you know, any company. Um, close it up. You do have jimping on the flipper tab. And even though I don't really like the shape of the flipper tab, I wish it would have been canted that way some. It, it doesn't hurt my finger any. The jimping's not harsh. It's kind of rounded over. It's not slippery, though. It gives you just enough traction. You can light switch it. And you can put your finger on top of that and push button it. I find it way more comfortable to light switch it though and it comes out just the same um, for lefties you can easily access that thumb hole as well slow roll it and spidey flick it without a problem they also included lefties with the pocket clip you got tip up left or right hand deep carry pocket clip let's see what that looks like in the pocket pretty much disappears you do see just a tad of this this top part and you have you have pretty good room in the in the pocket and you're not going to come in contact with that flipper tab or at least i didn't um let's close it back up you have that hidden stop pin as you can see right there when you open it it comes out just a hair and then it disappears again i like that design you have, uh, on this variation, you have the, the natural looking micarta, just flat scales with a deep chamfer going all the way around it. Um, did a pretty good job on that. 
you have the Civivi uh, logo on the pivot. It is a captured pivot. You have flush mounted T6, I mean T8 hardware throughout, except the pocket clip, which is T6, but the screws have been countersunk. And I like that they, they, they left this flat, especially with the micarta, because I've seen a lot of people, you know, on other knives where they mill out that little spot to keep it, you know, the, the clip from going side to side. But usually if you, you have tight, you know, tight enough fitment, it won't do that. But whenever you do have that milled spot, you have thin pieces of micarta. And micarta can be brittle, especially when it's thin. That's why micarta only is usually a good idea when you have liners to back it up. Not always the case. You can use thick enough micarta. Uh, you have a T8 pivot that does sit proud of the scales. It's like a dome pivot. I like this pocket clip. I like it way more than their older style pocket clip. I just, I didn't like that one whatsoever. I think this one looks nice. It does have a little bit uh, of a pokey ramp here. It does sit up a little high. Not terrible. I didn't notice it unless I was really pushing down on the scales. I like the fact that they didn't put a lanyard, uh, lanyard hole through the scales to break up this clean looking line, the clean looking lines here. They did add a post to the back. I think that's the best way to do it so it makes everybody happy you have a matching micarta backspacer that goes on both sides that goes about a quarter of the way up so pretty much a flow through design so you can blow it out if you want with compressed air uh, the inside of the scales as you can see right there have been heavily skeletonized to save on weight and let's check out that weight really quick 3.37 ounces, very, very lightweight for uh, those ounce and inches out there. It will make them happy because it's 3.5 inch blade, so it's under that ounce and inch that some people actually care about. Um, let's see, ergos. Ergos were good um, in the testing. I didn't really, I didn't start to feel hot spots until I was bearing down into the wood, doing a lot of pushing. And when I was doing, uh, when I was cutting that tubing, I did notice when I was cutting the tubing that where they did this chamfer right here, let me close this up, see if I can show y'all. Where they did this chamfer right here, there is a, like a hard line right here that I guess it could have softened it up a little bit. And being that this hooked, it was just tearing up my hands. And like I said, I also did feel that pocket clip. It wasn't terrible. I did eventually put on gloves, but I had been testing several knives before that, so it might not be an issue for the average person. You have good access to the lock bar because the lock bar sits up proud from the show side scale, and it has a little bit of jimping. Very easy for me to get a hold of it and for lefties as well. Um, let's get some size comparisons out of the way, and then we will wrap it up. You have the Ontario uh, Rat Model 1 is a little bit bigger, and the Rat 2 is going to be a little bit smaller. So it's it's that in-between size. I think that's the perfect size. Love it. Um, then these two models. Let's see. I got two more. Got the CJRB uh, Feldspar kind of like the Rat 2 size, might be the same size. And you have the Centros. Both of these CJRBs are, you know, in that middle size. I mean, you got the bigger Centros and the smaller, small, uh, what is this one? I just felt spore. Okay, there you go. So, what are my nitpicks and complaints? Kind of already talked about it. Um, the pocket clip ramp, it may not bother the average person. It bothered me whenever I was doing the wood shaving. And like I said, this line right here from this chamfer, it it was a little aggressive being that this comes down like that. Uh, it did dig into my hand. But your average EDC task, you shouldn't feel it at all. Um, another very, very minor nitpick is that dome pivot i would have liked to see being that everything else is flush countersunk i would have liked to see that flush as well but this is a budget knife so i can definitely look past that um 
Overall, I think this is a great bang for the buck. I like 14C28N a lot because it's, it's a highly stainless steel. And as you can see, they did a good job with it. It did excellent, in my opinion, with the test. Especially, I was testing five other knives with this one, and this one shined over the rest. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. And I hope everybody's having an absolutely wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.